A new People's Poll from GB News has found less than half of Brits know what D-Day refers to, know that it refers to the beginning of the Allied liberation of Europe. Perhaps more concerningly, only 31% of 18 to 24 year olds actually know what D-Day refers to. Well, with me now is the historian and former board member of the International Churchill Society, Rafe hayden Lanku, and the historian and podcaster, Oliver Webb Carter. Uh, Oliver, we'll start with you. How important is it to keep the memory of D-Day alive? Oh, it's vital, absolutely vital. And so I'd, I'd, I'd argue that the, um, the poll itself is, is, is mistaken. The question talks about the beginning of the Allied liberation of Europe, which actually mm. took place in Sicily, July 43, mm. just under a year before D-Day. So I'm surprised that the polling has asked that question. Of course, the Sicilian invasion was, uh, met, was, was accompanied with much espionage, uh, venerated in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the new movie of Operation, uh, Mince Operation Mincemeat. There's a West End musical about it as well. There is. I suppose that is keeping the flame of, of, of that story alive as well. Yeah, and these, these shows do really well. And I, I think there is a fascination to the Second World War. 18 to, 34, 18 to 24 year olds that's an age bracket that I, it's a, I, I, I'm a glass half person for. Mm. So I, I would like to think that, that as they get older, they'll get more and more interested in things like Operation Mincemeat. Well, Rafe, do you hold the same optimism or do we need to do more to, to, to get the next generation uh, really listening to these stories? Because what I found so moving about perhaps the last few days of, of, of veterans returning to the Normandy beaches and, and making that journey is that it was 80 years ago there are fewer and fewer of these people left. This generation of youth are pr probably the last ones who are ever going to be able to engage with, with veterans. Uh, it's going to become, for the youth of today, what the Boer War was for people of my generation within the space of, of a decade or two. You know, I went to my first D-Day commemoration in 1984 when I was eight years of age. So I'm deeply disheartened when, when I see these polls. This is just the latest of a long series of polls over the last 10 years, showing the inability of a majority of adults as well to understand all of this. And you can't be an informed formed and engaged citizen of the world today if you don't know how the world about you came to be, if you don't understand the de development of our history, of our culture, of our society, and most importantly, if you don't understand how the freedoms and liberties we enjoy today were hard won mm. and the struggle to preserve those. And so the reason that we commemorate D-Day is to honour those veterans who gave their today for our tomorrow mm. and for the fact that they risked and in many cases actually sacrificed their lives to secure our freedoms, our peace, our security and our democracy. And we should actually really be asking in what way are we carrying on that legacy today? And that, I think, is the challenge we face in the future. Mm. Is it a challenge, Oliver? Well, I think that, you know, you've mentioned um, films. That there, are, there are plenty of, of TV shows as well. We saw Dunkirk, the Christopher Nolan film. Mm. I think younger audiences have the opportunity to engage here. I'm, as I say, I think that perhaps more than half of the respondents were thinking of Sicily when, and therefore was Do you think that's an overly Churchillian oh, yeah, yeah, view? That. Of course, he, <laughs> he referred to it as the soft underbelly of Europe. Stalin didn't view it that way. He was urging the Allies to make the, make the, the, the French assaults. He was, and actually it makes for a great what if, I always think, that um, had we not gone in in June 44, waited a little bit longer, the Soviet Union, the, the Red Army would have would have advanced further into mm. Europe. And so who can tell where that, that would have ended? And, and, and of course, to the Poles, particularly perhaps, uh, the end of the Second World War wasn't a liberation. They didn't get their liberation until 1989, well, 1990. That's, that's right, much of Eastern Europe and t uh, as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that the Second World War... I think the other thing to point out is that the D-Day, whilst a vital operation and a massive success... It was and a the huge largest success. amphibious landing in human history. Indeed, indeed. Um, but it was an, uh, uh, a particular operation during the war. And I think if, if you were to flip it and ask uh, many respondents such as me mm. on a scientific question, I would probably not be able to tell you the, um, mm. the, the, the medical table, the, the chemical table term for H2O, for water or something like but that. But you just so, did it. I, well, that's water. <laughs> uh, ask me lead and I won't know. PB. 
Well done. There you go. Uh, Rafe, are we being too specific with these questions that we're polling young people? They know what the Second World War is. Do they need to know every operation? I think so. I should say my, my great uncle was ADC to the Polish president uh, in, in, during the Second World War based in London here. So the Polish question, very, very uh, important to me and my family. We couldn't go back to Poland after. That's why I'm still here in this country. Um, but, you know, a, a, a majority of British school children do not know who Winston Churchill is. Really? A quarter of British school children believe he is a fictional character like Sherlock Holmes. Those are the challenges we're facing. So yes, it's lovely to say we, there are films to watch, but the failure is for our education system. We only teach history till the age of 14 in this country. Mm. On the continent, it's to the age of 15 or 16. To the age of 14 is far too short a period mm. of time to teach the broad sweep of our history, particularly when you're also teaching children about the Mayan civilization or African or Islamic civilizations. We need to extend the curriculum to the age of 16. Mm. Primary school teachers only get six hours of teaching mm. in history in a one-year course, mm. and there are very few specialist teachers now in secondary schools. Mm. So the problem is with our education system. We've got a very limited time, but Oliver, should we be having more mandatory history at schools? You will never hear me arguing against that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Thank you for keeping it so short and brief, because we have come to the